Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic and today we're going to be discussing nesting loops, exiting loops, and continuing loops as well as tricks with strings which is what I want to do first because I should have done it a while ago but ah, there's so much stuff. Uh, that's why you need a textbook because uh, there's just so much stuff that I would never be able to go through all of it. Okay, so you might have realized that when you're dealing with information within uh, parentheses, for an example, you can put things down to the next line and it'll still work properly. So if I put an invalid character, we still get this uh, message. still pops up correctly. Something went terribly wrong. Now what if the code has gotten so long, like it is right now, and, well not really, and it's gone on too far and you want to bring it down to the ne next line so you can read it all. Well what you can do is, well, first well, first of all, let's uh, say you want to do it with a string, because I just showed you without a string. Uh, if it's in a string, uh, so it doesn't just have to be in message boxes, it could be if you're initializing a variable. What you can do is, uh, let's put a quote there, don't forget a space right here, you'll need it. Put a quote there, then a plus, underscore, enter. So if I run the program, click add, put in an invalid character, and look, it still works. Now what if you want the word wrong to actually go on to the next line? Well, what you can do is get rid of this underscore and replace it with VBCRLF, which stands for Visual Basic Carriage Return Line Feed, which basically means going on to the next line. And then an additional uh, plus sign for concatenation, basically. So if I run this and I throw in another invalid character, now the word wrong went on to the next line. So that's cool. So allow me to throw this back to normal. There we go. And what else do I want to show you? Ah, yes, putting quotes within quotes. So how do you go about doing that? Well, it's quite interesting in Visual Basic. Visual Basic is such a black sheep. Um, of course, I'm really used to C-based languages myself as string and let's set this equal to I don't know Adam says why hello there and well look at this well the reason why this text went black is because in uh, while the program is reading your code once it hits a second quote after the first one it's saying oh the string's done that's it everything after that is regular code. Uh, so in order to cancel this, all you have to do is throw in an additional um, quote. One there, and then an additional one right there. And there you go. So we have two there, two there, and then after that you can put in what else you, you want. So I'll throw in an adverb proudly. So I click save, and hopefully everything should fit label output dot text equals text dot to string oh I guess it wasn't text it's test there we go and there it is the quotes are there and they work so that's really really nice okay so I'm gonna get rid of all this now now back to loops so did you know that you can actually have loops within loops just like with if statements and in case you're wondering yes you may also put if statements within loops you can put uh, loops within if statements just whatever you want it's uh, I, I really recommend you test and try it out yourself just uh, so you know it makes sense so let's see here so let's create a simple while loop shall you know what uh, I'm gonna want this to we're not gonna need this anymore in fact, I'll just make it a comment just in case. So input con, input con. Okay, there we go. I think it was everything. Okay, so let's create a do while. And I'll make it i is less than 5. And I'll throw in list collection dot items dot add. And then inside, I'll throw in input should be a string dot to string there we go just to make sure and we will have to increment the i plus equals by one so I'll click save and oh did I mistype it? oh well and let's make sure this works so I'll throw in high 
And there you go, high prints five times. So that's good. Uh, well, let's create a, a nested loop. So right off the bat, we know that we're going to need a uh, another variable, a separate one. We want to use a separate one. So I'll throw in dim j as integer up here. And then as well here, let's set j equal to zero, just to be safe. And, well, let's create our new new one right here. Let's put it after this. You can put it wherever you want within the loop, but I'm going to put it, I want this to print first, uh, and, you'll know, and you'll see why. So let's create a for loop, a for next loop. So I'll throw in four. And then for the variable, I've noted, uh, my, I had a little green underline under my eye before, and I actually forgot about something. When referring to your uh, variables, within uh, a for loop, throw in your me, which is referring to the application itself, dot then the name of the variable. So I'm going to go j, so that's my j right there, so me dot j is equal to zero, and then I'm going to throw in, whoops, ah, sorry about that, and then let's see, how far do we want to go? Let's go to four, because I only want it to happen, um, I only want this to happen five times because zero, one, two, three, four. So that should be five times. And what should we have right on there? Let's throw in list. Whoops. List. I hope my uh, list is long enough. Dot items. Dot add. And then I'm going to throw in. Okay, so I'm going to make this high up there. And I'm going to make this a, a by myself. I'll just throw in by in there. And we'll need a, and J increments automatically. So it automatically, whoops, J, my bad. So J will increment automatically for us there. So let's see how this actually works. Uh, I hope I got everything right here. I believe I do. So, so yeah, let's do this. Whoops, there we go. So I click add and I'll type in hi. I'll click OK. And now let me explain this for you. So what you see here is when it first goes into the loop, i is 0, and it's telling it to add in whatever we typed. We typed in high. Then it goes into this for loop, set, setting uh, j equal to 0, and 5 times, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, to add in by. So it's doing it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then when it exits, uh, just like it was incrementing j, now it's going to increment i and go through the while loop again. And then here, uh, well, it throws in our high again, and then once again it goes into our for loop. Now, for loops will automatically set it back to whatever value you set it here. Now, if you're using a while loop, now how would you go about setting it back to zero? Well, out here, you would just, uh, whoops. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to, oh, I can't um, change it right now because my application is open. Uh, but anyways, what you would do is right before you go into that loop, set j right here j equals to z equal to zero. That's how you would do it for while loops. But here it automatically goes back to zero and it starts over and does it five times again. So uh, we have i is less than five, so let's see if we have uh, five highs. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. There we go. So it really did work. So that's really, really cool. So now let's figure out uh, how to exit a loop. So let's create a little if statement right here. So let's say once it gets to the second, once j is equal to 2, let's say we want it to just not continue after that anymore. So this is a very simple example, but it's just for showcase. So if, and then let's throw in j is equal to 0, then we can throw in uh, this end if right here, and then inside this if statement, we can throw in exit, And then, as you can see, you can put in for the do while loop, you can exit a do, so just so you know, but there's also exit for, so these are two different exits. So if you're trying to exit a while loop, use the do. If you're trying to exit a for loop, use the for. So I'll throw that in there. And that should be it. So, oh, I don't want it to be when it's zero, I want it to be when it's two. So I click save and then let's run this application again and see what happens.
So I'll click add, I'll type in hi, click OK. And now uh, it's only doing it when uh, j is equal to 0 and when j is equal to 1. So that's only two times it's now doing the loop. As once it gets to j equals 2, it's going to exit the 4 and then continue on. And, and then it's going to finish the while loop as well. So that's really nice. And note that you don't have to only use this for nested loops. Um, I'm, just, I'm just being a little, I guess, ahead with my examples. Uh, but I hope this isn't too confusing. It's um, pretty nice. Another way you can do this, um, you can actually throw in some additional code here as well if you'd like to execute after, uh, right before the exit for, or you don't even need an exit if you just want a special case for code. But anyways, if you just want to exit no additional code, what you can do is get rid of this end if right here, and then move this, whoops, and then throw in the exit for right there. So let's try it again. You know what? I'll make it three this time. So I'll click add, and I'll click in high, and that does it three times, but it still works, so it's just one line of code. So that's really, really nice. Okay, now the last one I want to show you is the continue. And basically what that means is the continue, once you reach, uh, you'll be working with if statements as well with this one. And basically what that will do, uh, allow me to, there we go. What that'll do is get out of this loop for this one iteration but it will still continue the loop. So if I throw in j equals 3 and I type in continue, continue 4, excuse me, and the same thing, it can be, uh, you know, continue do, but there's your two options right there. Uh, mine will be the 4. And basically what, what this will do is only not execute this code for that one iteration. So, I'll click add, I'll type in high, and now we have four buys. So how does this work? Well, the difference between the continue and the exit is the exit will not continue the loop. Uh, it, 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 the continue only exits the loop for that one iteration. So basically, uh, what's happening here is it's going in for one... You know what? It will be better if I uh, actually show you a number instead. So... Hmm. Uh, that's going to be a little difficult. Uh, oh yeah, listen items. Okay, so I'll throw in. Whoops. I'll throw in J. Dot two string. Uh, hopefully that'll work and that'll be a little bit more clear. Add high. Okay, there you go. So notice how when it's going into the next loop, so it's, the high is the do while loop, and all the ones in between is the is this loop right here where I'm adding, uh, I'm putting in j. Notice how it goes in when j is 0, when it's 1, when it's 2, but then when it's 3, it's not going to continue the code that's after that. But bear in mind, if you have any code before it, that will execute. Uh, but only when it, j is 3, it does not work. While exiting, uh, not only will it not do it for 3, but it won't do it for 4 either. So, exit, save, I'll play this again. Whoops. Add high. See? Now that four, it, it was zero, one, two, four, but now it's only zero, one, two. And that's the real big difference between exit loops and for loops. So allow me to throw that up here uh, for the information that we learned today. Um, so continue exits loop for that iteration and what's the other one exit and what that does is exits loop indefinitely unless called again unless called again and there you go so you know exit and it can be a do or whoops or a four, not a foe, my bad. So uh, copy this, paste, and there you go. So you can, uh, there you go. Uh, okay, so I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and I'm almost at that 15 minute mark. Um, so I'll see you next time.